gives us free. Give us free. Your Honor, please instruct the defendant that he cannot disrupt these proceedings with such a Give us us free! If we are to have any symbols of all this, do this! Unity and welcome my conscious and unconscious family and friends. This is the all new Black Village Community Podcast and I am truly your host of the show, JC aka Afro Black, dropping nothing but the raw and uncut without any fear as I use my mic as a spear to chuck a chuck you with liberated truth. I am your host and your native soldier in the struggle. My purpose and mission for this show is first to enlighten, inform, and engage. And I want to engage with all who claim to know the truth. All truth seekers and my native family, I welcome you. This show is dedicated to all our indigenous native ancestors and to all those who've carried the mantle of truth and to every person with the ability to throw off the chains of comfortable habit and unwarranted assumption and move in a new liberated direction that is guided by truth and observational evidence no matter where that direction may lead you my main objective and purpose here is freedom mind soul and spirit that being said Welcome to the Black Village Community Podcast and much love from our great universal goddess and mother of all living here and above. in the house. The Matrix. Do you want to know what it is? The Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Even now, in this very room. You can see it when you look out your window, or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? That you are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage. A prison. For your mind. For your mind. For your mind.
Hey, 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 this is JC, a.k.a. Afro Black, and I am here with ya for another delicious Black Sunday to drop nothing but the raw and uncut here, right here on the Black Village Community Podcast, and I am happy to be here today, another delicious Black Sunday to share, to communicate, to discuss, to inform, and you know what? In some cases, engage. And you know what? You know, last week was a beautiful, delicious Black Sunday as me and my queen did a, uh, you know, recap. You know, we did a recap and on some things and did some apologizing for some mistakes, you know. Allowing the week before then, as we talked about that third and I believe, no, it was that, that third and last episode of Divide and uh, the dividing breakdown with the black and brown and how I had Brother Jaden on there. You know, I don't want to recap again on that because this is a, another podcast subject. This is a whole new discussion, but we're still going back in the past, but not so far in the past as we discuss something that I know is familiar with a lot of black folks out there. And, you know, today my queen might not be joining me, so I might be alone and when i'm by myself i get real comfortable i'm pretty sure you guys should know that when i'm when i'm running the show and my queen is not you know not dog watching a brother you know because I, I give my queen all the honor and respect but when i'm by myself i become a radical soldier on this show here dropping the raw and uncut just like that you feel me so today's podcast topic is and i quote roots the movie and the transatlantic slave trade is it fact or fiction again roots the movie and the transatlantic slave trade is it fact or fiction and if you guys think i'm trying to bait in some conscious pan-african brothers i am not for the purpose of argument and debate as much as dropping seeds of curiosity on the brothers so they can do their own research you feel me so let me play some something a little bit more laid back that i'm going to versatile to with you guys as i talk about roots being fact or fiction the translated slave trade fact or fiction is it is it all true is it all real is some of it true is some of it real how much let's talk about that today so let me change up the tone with jay bach as always you feel me with brother jay bach you feel me? The brother who started out, you know, the intro, brother J Bob. You hearing him? Aboriginal people. Are we Aboriginal people? Or are, are, are we this this construct of what they, you know, that Jesse Jackson and his house Negro crew came up with, you know, labeling us and using the government to back him up as they back his house Negro ass up with the construct and label of calling us African American. And then House Negro Obama in may of 2016 before leaving office wrote into federal law that all black people in america who are citizens of america are now african-american this house negro continued to call himself sealing things through the law of the white devil system you feel me so on that note (laughs) <laughs> you feel me? I, you know, I got something I want to play. You know, I want to. You know, I'm still on the topic. Rather, if roots the TV movie and the translating trade, slave trade, is it real? Now, the question is, I'm pretty sure a lot of brothers and sisters know my position on the whole thing, especially those who who are indigenous conscious, who know who I am, who know where I came from. I used to be a pan. I used to be. I used to spit that pan African stuff. I used to spread that pan African consciousness. I used to pee a pan Africanist on myself, you know, because that's all I knew. You know, that's all I knew. So don't get it twisted. I'm not anti-African. I'm a, I'm anti in uh, those who I'm, I'm I'm against those who are against indigenous culture, indigenous identity. I'm anti white supremacist. I'm anti yes, I'm anti Pan Africanist. But I'm not against the African culture. I'm not against the African people. And I know what relationships in the past, going back hundreds of thousands of years and even going back even just thousands of years the relationship the indigenous people of North America the indigenous Amerindians of North America that they had with the African people 
and how Africans even came over here and stayed and didn't go back and just cohabitated with the indigenous people. You feel me? Of North America. So I know about all that. Okay. The, I, so, but my point is, I'm, I'm, I'm establishing the fact that I am not anti-African. I am not anti-African. I am anti those who are against recognizing that culture supersedes the fictitiousness of race, because there is no such thing as separate races. This is this is this is JC AKA our Afro JC AKA Afro Black dropping with you what I know so you can understand and comprehend me before I continue with this podcast topic you feel me that I am not anti-African I'm, I'm against white supremacy I'm against pan-African philosophy because pan-African philosophy makes everybody and anybody of melanated complexion African and then I saying that that's then that's saying that uh, 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 pan-African philosophy supersedes culture I don't agree with that that's saying pan-african ideology supersedes culture when that's taken away the principles and standards of our ancient ancestors because when it came to the african people and when it came to the indigenous people of north and south america principles culture heritage customs were the glue that kept the family and kept the community and kept the nation together so on that note let me share with you uh, a brother who has his own podcast, okay? Uh, and uh, I'm going to let him present his podcast to you. But, you know, this brother, I, I, you know, my purpose of playing this audio cast of this brother talking about Roots the movie and the transatlantic slave trade and how he used to be a pan Africanist because this brother speaks to where I came from. This brother speaks to, I think, a lot of black people who don't, didn't have their indigenous identity, their indigenous connection, their indigenous culture, anything, because they did not know because the system was defining who they were as far as their identity. Like it continues to try to do and using house niggas and using the system and the educational system and the media to continue an agenda that they need to stop wasting their ridiculous ass time because people are going to see through the crap. You feel me? That, that, that Willie Lynch indoctrination is that, that shit is breaking down. They need, to let, they need to let it go. They need to let it go. It ain't working. But I know they're not going to stop because they're idiots. But I want to play this brother. And, and I'm going to let this brother I'm going to let this brother introduce himself. I'm going to let this brother introduce what he do. And, it, and it's going to speak to what we're talking about right now. The podcast topic, which is Roots the Movie and the Transatlantic Slave Trade. Is it fact or fiction? You feel me? And I'm going to start it with, it's a two-part audio cast. I'm going to play the first part right now, and I will be right back. Howdy, those in YouTube land. I am your soul brother, number one, Angel Snub Number 7. And, of course, this is the Realities Temple on Earth. <clears throat> Sure. I just want to bring to our attention something. <clears throat> I'm very sure this should be a short video, usually 15 minutes or longer, but I'm very sure. I just want to make this point. Howdy, those in YouTube land. I am your soul brother, number one, Angel Snub Number Seven. And of course, this is the Realities Temple on Earth. <clears throat> Going to make this short. I just want to bring to our attention something. <clears throat> I'm very sure this should be a short video, usually 15 minutes or longer, but I'm very sure. I just want to make this point. Now, mind you, I was like many of you out there in YouTube land. I was taught and I was brought up, as many of you, in the belief in what we call the transatlantic slave trade. And over 100 million Africans died during that period of time and whatever. I grew up the same way you did. Roots. Kutukente came on a boat from Africa and now it has been it, 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 it blah, 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 I'm tongue tied. That's because I really don't feel like making a video but I want to. That's how it go. But uh, it was brought to my attention that Alex Haley was sued. He, he was not the author of Roots. He plagiarized the story from some other source. Alex Haley was, was sued 
Those who published Roots, was, they were sued and they lost. Alex Haley plagiarized Roots. The whole story was a fabrication. And see, we I can't I can't ignore truth. When somebody shows me things like this, I cannot just because I I want to believe in the Kuta Kinte story. I can't just say, oh man, that's a bunch of baloney. Uh uh, all these excuses, uh, the white man did this and no, uh, blah, blah. No, something is, there's a problem. If somebody takes you to court and they win and call and, and made a claim that you plagiarized their work, the information that I have, the estate of Alex Haley is getting no royalties from Roots or anything of that nature because he was not the creator. It was found that the whole thing was false. Now, I, I guess this was done after the death of Alex Haley. I'm not sure when it, when it happened. It's a hurting thing to believe in the Kuta Kinte story, and it's a lie. Okay, for me, the Kuta Kinte story, cool. It's plagiarized. I have no problem with that. Doesn't bother me at all. Wow. Believed in that at one time. Just like this transatlantic slave trade. I don't have to make a video in detail about or present the information, the evidence. There are many videos on social media, YouTube and elsewhere. There you go. So that's the first half of that. My point is showing how black folks are waking up. This brother just told you, and I'm, I'm gonna present the information that the brother is talking about. I'm going to present the information that the brother is talking about, about how, because I, I got it right here. I got the information, the ads, the, the showing the, about the suit and everything, how Alex Haley and his little crony crew, who, uh, you know, whoever was supporting him and backing him financially, publishers or whoever you might want to say, how they were sued for plagiarism. I got the information. I'm, a matter of fact, let me just read it. I got it right here. I mean, and if, and, and, you know, uh, let me first. My, my queen put together this information right here that I have. Uh, okay, and um, it starts out. Says the Washington Post reported in an article written on December 15, 1978, 78, titled um, "Bethesda," uh, titled uh, "The Arthur Settles Roots Suit." Four five hundred thousand dollars. The article states Alex Haley agreed to pay uh, Beth Sita, Mr. Uh, M.D. Arthur, about five hundred thousand five hundred thousand dollars today for publicly expressed regret that that portions of a 1967 novel called The African had found their way into Haley's best-selling book, Roots. He plagiarized. Okay, it goes further. Uh, the out-of-court settlement came to a copyright infringement suit brought by Harold Courtlander of Bethsaida, uh, Beth, Beth, Beth Sita in U.F. District Court. Haley testified last month that although he had not read The African before writing Roots, there were brief passages from Courtlander's work that had been inadvertently incorporated into Haley's work. <laughs> the New York Times article by Arnold H. Uh, Lubach, uh, December 15, 1978, titled The Roots Plagiarism Suit is Settled, states that Alex Haley settled a lawsuit yesterday by acknowledging that his words renowned, his, his, his world renowned book, Roots, contained some material from relatively unknown from a relatively unknown novel about slavery that was published nine years earlier he plagiarized he, he, he the book he plagiarized the movie is not about his family it's not about him and you got black folks who are watching these uh, remakes or, and continuations of something that was false and continue to watch something that was false and all the continuations of it that is false so let me let you finish listening to this brother as this brother continues to talk about you know his experience and and, 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 we, and I'll be right back and we continue this subject of Roots the movie and the transatlantic slave trade is it fact or fiction here we go 
Brothers and sisters who have done their research, many of them using common sense and logic also, they are disproving the transatlantic slave trade. But see, that's a story that a lot of us, we were, we were raised on and we love. Very popular. But for me, if it's a lot, it's a lot. I remember when I first heard somebody saying that the transatlantic slave trade is not true and that the black man and woman sold brothers and sisters of America we are not Africans. When I first heard that, I was just like, y'all, oh man, come on, get out of here. You just don't want to be an African. I said, this. I was saying the same thing. And me being who I am, I put up a, a decent defense. Still could. But just because you can put up a decent defense and these particular people are having a hard time defending their position does not make me right. It just means that I had the skill, I have the ability to defend my belief. My my logic does not make them wrong. However, since I am open to the truth, I cannot just ignore what they're talking about. Let me investigate. Let me start doing some thinking on my own. So within the last few years, I really began to ponder about this transatlantic slave trade, we are African thing. And I have come to the conclusion that many of you see it in, in, in recent videos that I'm not no longer going with that the popular story that we have been told. Matter of fact, I asked the question, who is the one behind the transatlantic slave trade story? None other than the people that y'all call devil. None other than the people that y'all call liars and deceivers and manipulators. They are the ones who are pushing that black folks, the soul brothers and sisters in America, we are Africans, the transatlantic slave trade. Imagine if you was defecating with a with 80 other people on this boat. Well, some of the slaves made it. Some No, nobody was going to make this journey. There would be no survivors. It's too much going on. You got too much filth. You got too much ocean doing too many things. It's just, it's just the whole stuff. The whole story don't make any, it just, it's just, it's not, it's not vibing. Who's telling the story? Who's pushing it? The races. Why? They pushing it because they would rather you look to Africa rather than right here under your feet where you was created, where you was born. So you don't make no claims to the land where you actually were created because they made you right here. <laughs> the brother dropping the raw and uncut. He's dropping the raw and uncut. You got black folks that's been feeding. I was one of them. I fed on the story. I fit on the story. And when you don't really think about the details of what you're being told, it's easy to embrace it and to accept it. And you know what? I'm going to tell you what's funny. A lot of these house Negroes, these educated house Negroes who got degrees in African studies, don't get it twisted. I still love a lot of the master teachers because the information that they gave is truth. When you comes to African knowledge, not African history, African culture. When it comes to the history of Kemet, and as long as you know how to filter out the white man's fictitious cartoon lies that he's inputted into the stories, you can get the truth. There's a lot of truth in African culture. Master teachers like, you know, uh, Dr. John John Henry Clark, may he rest in peace. You know, Dr. Uh, 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 Auntie Chick Diop, Dr. Ben Johannes. I don't take nothing away from those master teachers, man. Them brothers, man, I learned a lot from those brothers' information they put out. Didn't know the brothers personally, no. You know, I think it was a blessing for anybody who knew those brothers personally. But to apply that and blanket that uh, history and blanket that uh, uh, information across the entire continent of America, to blanket that history and information and to spread it amongst all black people of North America is a entire ridiculous false it's just it's wrong and that's what has happened you know now you know now to those who immigrated over here from Africa that's who Dr. Clark that's who Dr. Yohanan that's who Dr. Antichia Dr. Chick Diop 
Amos Wilson. That's who they were speaking to. To those who immigrated from Africa and came over here. I will say that information is for you. That information is good. In essence, if you want to look up information and realize those Africans that were brought here, which was less than 5% of the populace that was taken from Africa, only less than 5% came here to America. Not no 20 million, not no 10 million, not no 5 million Africans came. No, not no 3 million. You got Negroes believing the false narrative that is perpetuated in this white supremacist society. Am I saying all America is white supremacist? But no, I'm talking about the fabric of America. I'm talking about the information that's being fed to my people. I'm talking the lies that's being told in history. And everybody know that the white man has manipulated history. Even when I was a Pan-Africanist, I comprehended that the white man would manipulate, mold and fold, break and make, and take and give history to whom he want his way. The Bible itself, the so-called King James Version, the Septuagint, the Geneva Bible, and all them Greek and Catholic translations of what they call the word of God is a prime example of what I'm saying, how the white man will take and make Huh? Fold and mold. Huh? And then present it to you. For, that's true. And he's done, not only done it with the Bible, he's done it with the entire history that's been fed to my people here in North America. When it comes to our culture, our true identity, and our home, and our home is right here under my feet, which was originally called by my indigenous ancestors, Turtle Island. But yet you they've given they've given the cultural history, they've given the entire history of North America to a group of people who are mongoloid Native Americans who traveled here about over 6,000 years ago or 8,000 years ago across the Bering Strait. As if when they came here there was nothing here. When they came here no, they in, they encountered a people who were here already. Who had already built civilizations, who had already built a culture, who, who had already built uh, 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 societies and communities. They had already came, and when, it, when them people came across that Bering Strait, there was already somebody here. They were called indigenous, Paleo Amerindian black indigenous Americans. Well, the word American became theirs, which was introduced to them by the Spanish when the Spanish first came here. But if we want to go back hundreds of thousands of years ago, before if we want to go back before the first Spanish European or even the first any European came to North America, and we want to talk about that history and that culture, I'm talking about something that that was already established. Indigenous people. The indigenous Amerindian black people of this country were already here. Not only before the Europeans and before the Spanish, but even before the, the Siberian, Mongoloid people who are now called the Native Americans. And don't get it twisted. Those people are my brothers and sisters as well. Because many of the Mongoloid Native American tribes uh, came together in, uh, under, the, under the Great Peace. And that's why the Great Law of Peace was created. Many of our indigenous black ancestors and, and tribes did not get along with Mongoloid Native Americans and they had wars. So this is the whole reason why the great law of peace was created to bring peace amongst the people. So we didn't have a problem with the Mongoloid Native American living with us in, on Turtle Island. But the problem is that them brothers sold us out. They sold us out. You feel me? They are a prime example of House Negroid turning his back on his brother and his sister. So, you know, on that note, even though you heard that other half right there, I got more info on it. But before I go into that info, back to the podcast topic of establishing the fact about rather if there's any facts or fiction 
to Roots, and then we can get back to other things as well. So let me say this here. You know, I, you know, I decided that I wanted to do some research on this thing. I was just curious, and I'm going to share this with the conscious community. I was just curious about something. You know what I was curious about? I'm going to tell you what I was curious about. I was curious about the fact that I noticed that every few years, you know, I'm 50 years old. I'm 50, okay? I made 5 the 19th of May. And see, and I just was thinking about, you know, all throughout the years growing up, all these slaves shows and movies I've seen throughout my lifetime and I was just curious about how many I've seen in my lifetime how many of these movies are being put out because if there is an agenda which I know there is behind this propaganda then there must be a continual replay of it to keep it before our eyes so that our children's 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 children embrace and accept the same programming so I was curious now I didn't want to go too far back, and I didn't want to go, you know, I didn't want to put too much down talk about too much, so I was curious. I'm going to tell you right now. I got, right now, I, I mean, I got a number of movies, starting in 1969, a movie called Slaves. This movie is called Slaves. July, came out July 2nd, 1969, and this is what it says, a cruel Mississippian planter uh, and a slave mistress is inspired to rebellion by a Christian slave starring Dion Reck, Ossie Davis, and Julius Harris. So, you go, look, man, Ossie Davis, go that far. This, this, I want you to know, I, you know, if you do your own research on this, if you do your own research on this and see yourself, you'll notice there's a, there, there's a, there, you'll see there's a pattern. You see there's a pattern. Ossie Davis, man, I mean, he's played in some of every slave movie there is written. I'm, I'm finish it. He's played in Roots. Ossie Davis, that boy, it makes me, I'm wondering, I'm wondering, I, I, I know he was an actor and he's doing his job, but I'm wondering what's up here, so like I said, now here's another one, 1972, The Legend of the Negro, Nigger Charlie, The Legend of Nigger Charlie, 1972, and this is what it says about three escaped slaves, Fred Williams, uh, Duval Martin, and Don Pedro uh, Coley. Fall in, fall in with different, with di uh, fall in with drifters while fleeing a bounty hunter. Okay. Uh, how about this one? Goodbye, Uncle Tom, 1971. <laughs> These are all slave movies, and I'm just in the 70s. How about this? The autobiography of Miss Miss Jane Pittman, 1974. Now, don't get it twisted. I know uh, Jane Pittman uh, was a real sister, okay, and who told her story. Uh, matter of fact, this was right here. This was her autobiography, which was done in 1974, beginning and during the racial turmoil of the 1960s, Louisiana, a 110-year-old ex-slave Jane Pittman, played by Cicely Tyson. I mean, I've seen it. I remember the movie. Grants an interview to a persistent journalist. Now, the thing about this is this. She's 110 years old. So, and this was done in the 1960s. So this woman got some history of slavery. But you know what? She's still speaking to the fact of the fact that her memory, her culture, her hadris was taken away. She don't if you actually see the movie, it doesn't speak to what was taken from her. They continue to insinuate that Jane Pittman is a descendant of an African slave. That's the something that these movies constantly perpetuate. It's a part of the propaganda. How about this movie? And I remember seeing this movie as a kid. Mandingo, 1975. A Louisiana plantation owner. Son has an affair with a slave. And, his, and he's not the only one. A Louisiana plantation's... I don't know what he say. No, no. Actually, in the movie, it's a, you, it's a... I don't know who put that there. A Louisiana's plantation owner's James Morrison's son, Perry King, has an affair with a, with a slave. And, and he's not the only one. Starring... Yeah, because it's about... If you actually see Mandingo, it's about a slave, big brother, named, and they, they call him Mandingo, and he has an affair with a white woman. I don't know why they didn't put that in a... They wrote something else up off in there. Something ain't right. Somebody got them, got their stuff thrown. I saw the movie. Okay. Now, how about this one? 1976. It's called Drum. Another slave movie. A slaver by uh, play, uh, buys drums. Uh, a bordello queen 
a Bordello Queen's son in 1860 New Orleans story. They, they don't, boy, they don't even give enough information to explain the movie. But the movie is about slavery again. It starts out by saying a slaver, okay? A slaver named, um, and it says some queens named Bordello and all this other crap. But here's another movie called The Last Supper, 1976. In 18th century Cuba, a Culus, a Culus count wants to bring the light of a, brings wants to bring the light of religion to the lives of slaves, and he can he can't think uh, he can think of no better way to share the power of Christianity than to involve them in a staging of Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper. Wow! A white man took his slave Negroes and put together. A Last Supper play for his, you know, to entertain him and his friends. And this was his way of bringing Jesus to their life. And this movie is titled The Last Supper. It was it was put it was put out in 1976. Okay, I mean, I, the list goes on, people. I'm just in the 70s. You feel me? I'm just in the 70s. I ain't, got, you know what? Let me just drop on down past the rest of these, cause I got movies from the. Look, let me, let me, I'm getting closer. How about this right here? A Woman Called Moses. I bet you many have seen that. Came out in 1978. Escape Slave Harriet Tubman. I ain't got a problem with the biographies. The only problem I got with the biographies is that these people who were slaves, you got to remember, their memory was taken away due to chattel slavery. They don't know their indigenous culture and connection. But ask yourself this, how Jane Pittman... How is how is Jane Pittman or Harriet Tubman? How do they know the terrain to free slaves? How the hell Harriet Tubman knows where to go to help escape Negroes from the South to Canada? How would she know that? If she didn't, if she wasn't indigenous to North America, how the hell somebody from Africa come to an alien country? And if you want to say, well, maybe Harriet Tubman was born here. Yes, she was born here because her mama was an African slave. No, I'm going to let you know right now. Go look up Harriet Tubman's family or, or, or Jane Pittman. You will find out that it's very obscure. You can't find, you know, you only can find on one parent. You can't find the other parent. You, you, they won't talk about their ethnicity or they just call them Negroes and Africans. But even if so, the woman was, I mean, look at Harriet Tubman. Let's go right here. Harriet Tubman um, was played by Cicely Tyson, leads an underground railroad, taking others north to freedom. Okay. But if you do, if you go read on Harriet Tubman, it was, this goes all the way to the 1800s. And the woman was old. So that means she, she had to have been born around the 1700s. You feel me? Her people were indigenous to North America. Now, no, no, let was, let's get down. Roots, who came out in 77. Now, we all know that movie was falsified. I got an article right here. There's two articles I got right here. I got one by a, uh, by a journalist, uh, journalistic um, organization called Salon. Okay, anybody know anything about Salon? They do a lot. They're basically a political uh, magazine or a political journalistic worthy organization. Uh, it's called Facts Fiction Tangled Roots how a family history that wasn't entirely true broke through America's biggest lies. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? The title of this article is Fact, Fiction, and Tangled Roots. How a family history that wasn't entirely true broke through America's biggest lies. Now, let me, let me continue to read. From Alex Haley's book to a culture-shaping um, miniseries and now an action adventure remake. How much is it true? Let me scroll down. Okay. Reading this article to you. It says Roots in its various forms is largely a work of imagination rather than history. Anybody who want to go check this out go you can go check it out. It's on salon.com Roots in its various forms is largely a work of imagination rather than his, rather than history, it wasn't presented that way at first, which has led to no to no end of grief and confusion over the years. But at this point, that's hardly an indictment. Four decades after the publication of Alex, Haley, Alex Haley's Pulitzer Pulitzer winning book, 
and the production of an NBC miniseries that reshaped America's consciousness, it's, it's definitely not a secret. The important question, I would say, are about what kind of imaginative work Roots is and was, and what, ima- and what image we see reflected when we gaze into what did we learn from Roots in the 1970s. And what can we learn from it now? As a buffed up action adventure remake who final chapter airs Thursday on on the History Channel. Now, this came out, this article, let me see, let me go up to the date of when this came out so you guys can know. Uh, This came out Thursday, June 2nd, 2016. Okay? Now, the whole purpose of this article is because, I got another article right here, this article is titled how historically accurate how historically accurate is roots the book is based on based on has generated controversy now this both of these articles I'm reading is about because of the um, when they came out with roots again they came, um, early I think last year and everybody in their daddy was watching it I think it was called roots the saga roots the saga of an American family <laughs> and so this is this is what they're talking about. Everybody, anybody who want to know the truth about Alex Haley can go find out. The movie is not based on any truth. Let me remember this article right here we put out by I'm reading right here. This article came out uh, May 30th, 2016. Okay, and it's on um, Bustle Bustle.com is um, is the the newsworthy organization. All right. In 1977, the groundbreaking miniseries Roots captivated millions of viewers based on the Pulitzer Prize winning novel of the same name by Alex Haley. It told the story of an African-American family from colonialism, from colonialism to reconstruction and literally brought the discussion of the history of race in America into viewers living rooms. And now history is reviving the miniseries nearly 40 years later with a remake airing across the network history channel a and e and lifetime beginning on monday may 30th considering the dialogue stated started by the original miniseries and its legacy new audiences may be curious about the details of the story and want to know how historically accurate it uh root uh is root is roots okay since the miniseries in its adaptation, the question of Root's accuracy falls to the source material as explained by New York Post. Haley's book has been the center of controversy over his historical claims for years. Though the book was presented as a factual account of Haley's own family, history, and some fictional embellishment, experts soon found inaccuracies and inconsistencies between some of its claims and historical documents. As the story of Root goes, Haley's Haley was the great 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 grandson of Kunta Kinte the book's uh, protege, uh, protege, uh, excuse me <laughs> pro uh, protagonist the book's protagonist and uh, patriarch Kinte was a slave captured in Gambia and brought to the United States where he refused to accept the new name Toby or having his freedom taken okay let me scroll down some more okay however However, the lineage of Kente's family may have been inaccurate. In Roots, according to CNN, the network reports that the genealogists, the, that the genealogies have found inaccuracies in Haley's family tree. Like, in fact, that the records suggest that, re, that the real Kunta Kente died five years before the birth of Haley's great-great-great-grandmother, Kitsi. Though Roots portray Kitsi's as Kente's daughter, the New York Post also reports that many of the dates in Roots seem to be wrong and that the BBC found a tape of Haley's interviewing the historian of the historian of his ancestors' African home, which depicts Gambian officials and Haley correcting the net man's story to better fit the authors. Wow. Basically, they were lying. An interview tried by Alex Haley's Roots Foundation writer Lawrence Global asked Haley if, if, the, if he prefers to describe Roots with a different word than novel. 
To which Haley replied, uh, faction. <laughs> he said, faction. I saw that the word in it, I saw that, I saw that word in a book in London. And it means a mixture of facts and fiction. With Roots, I, with Roots, I worked my head off to research everything and still a lot of the book is fiction. While the details of Kente's story may, uh, may not be ver- verifiable, the slave experience was real, was it was 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 real and significant. And thanks to Roots' audience, uh, we're finally seeing these stories and understanding an important horrific part of an American history. Mark Wolper, who produced the 2016 remake whose father produced the original 1977 series, echoed a similar sentiment sentiment in an interview with Huffington Post, uh, responding to Quentin Tarantino telling Newsweek nothing about Roots. uh, Roots rings true in the story, in the storytelling uh, whopper, in the storytelling whopper. I respect the Tarantinos as uh, uh, as a filmmaker, but his statement his statements are like um, a a backseat driver 30 years later after the uh, after a lot of change to say nothing to say nothing rings true shows a clear lack of understanding of where the country was socially at the at the time roots aired when the series came to tv it was like nothing the country had seen uh, to that point we have come to we have come so far since Roots um, hits our television in 1977, and so. But you know what? No, he's making excuses for basically him, uh, his father, putting together a false story. And so, I would encourage you guys, anybody, to go research yourself, find out. You see yourself, you know, as well as you know. I got some information right here, and look. And I was, you know, er, as I was explaining all these movies, I got movies that I, I haven't even listed. And named all the movies, slave movies, okay, um, um, and um, that continue to pep- perpetuate our television, or you know that comes out in, on, on the big screen every few years, okay. Um, I'm looking at it like, remember, if anybody's seen the movie Amistad that came out in 1997, okay. What about Jefferson in Paris? About Jeff- Thomas Jefferson's relationship with a slave girl. That came out in 1995, March 31st. Okay, another slave movie called A House Divided that came out July 30th in uh, year 2000. Amazing Grace that came out in February 25th, 2013, and then 12 Years a Slave that came out um, in 2013, October 18th. You feel me? The Birth of a Nation again and that movie was a huge disappointment because it doesn't speak to his indigenous connection to the indigenous people because Nate Turner was a black Indian Nate Turner was a black Indian the people who hid him were Indians and then were his people so the movie Birth of a Nation was seriously a fictitious uh, you know it was, it was, it was you know, fact fiction basically fact and fiction mixed together okay but um so let me um so I'm, I'm i'm going to continue this podcast and do a part two because there's more information i want to share even about um the falsity of the transatlantic slave trade and i know a lot of you conscious brothers and sisters you guys have heard this before but there's a lot of you know as the white man continues to perpetuate his white supremacist uh, false identity, uh, you know, and he continues to recycle it and to continue to perpetuate it. I'm going to continue to play, perpetuate the truth. I'm going to continue to tell it, tell the raw and uncut. You feel me? I'm going to continue to recycle the truth. You feel me? And that's what I will continue to do as a conscious indigenous brother. You feel me? Um, yeah, my queen, I got this information right here. My queen pulled up on the suit. And I believe I, you know, I've read about the suit, and I'm pretty sure everybody know anybody who know anything about this, and I'm pretty sure my conscious brothers and sisters who are indigenous aware, they know that uh, Alex Haiti had to come out the pocket you know, and come out and p- kick in some duggets. That mean the movie must have made a lot of money for him to have to come out and fork out over five hundred thousand uh, dollars for plagiarism. That mean I mean that man must have made a grip of money off that movie. Okay, but uh, let me also play 
I want to play something that I think is important. I'm going. This is going to lead into my second part when I start. You know, next next delicious Black Sunday. I'm, I want to play this, and you know, white people know this. It's really sad when black people don't know this. Now, history is, you know, you got white people who are wanting the truth to be come out and, you know, and, and white people know this truth about our history. That not a whole, not no 10 million Africans came to North America. So, you know, on the, you know, I'm, let me play this right here. This is audio cast. It's called um, Crash Course. And it's it, it's just a little, um, it's just a, a less than two minutes and it's going to speak to what I'm talking about right here. So check this out right here. Hi, my name is John Green. This is Crash Course World History, and today we're going to talk about slavery. Slavery is not funny. In fact, it's very near the top of the list of things that aren't funny. So today's episode is going to be a little light on the jokes, but I'm going to help you understand what pre-Civil War Americans often euphemistically referred to as the peculiar institution. Slavery is as old as civilization itself, although it's not as old as humanity thanks to our hunting and gathering foremothers. But the numbers involved in the Atlantic slave trade are truly staggering. From 1500 to 1880 CE, somewhere between 10 and 12 million African slaves were forcibly moved from Africa to the Americas. And about 15% of those people died during the journey. I know you're saying, that looks like a very nice ship. I mean, my God, it's almost as big as South America, yet not to scale. And those who didn't die became property, bought and sold like any commodity. Where Africans came came from and went to changed over time. But in all, 48% of slaves went to the Caribbean and 41% to Brazil. Although few Americans recognize this, relatively few slaves were imported to the US, only about 5% of the total. 5% of the total. 5% of the total. 5% of the total. Did you hear that? Only 5% of the total. Of 100% of the Africans that was taken. I'm saying when you say 100%, that's a statistic on the number of Africans that they, that was taken. Out of 12 million Africans, less than 5% came to North America. Less than 5% came to North America. And you got black folks running around here believing that 12 million Africans came to North America because they too ignorant to study and research and find out that no, ain't no 12 million Africans came to North America. Yeah, yeah, my hey, our brother Roland, I see he's in the chat room. Oh my goodness, hey, my brother. Hey, me, I say hello to brother. So yeah, man, ain't no, ain't no twelve mean Africans came to North America. Black folks need to wake the hell up. You feel me? And look, he said less than, less than five percent, less than five percent. You feel me? Less than 5% came here. And you know what? I want you to know. You know, when it comes to our identity, when it comes to who we are, it's really sad. Can you imagine, you know, the, 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 the you know, mo- us who are born during this time in the 80s, us, us who was born in the 60s and the 70s and 80s. I was born in the 60s. You know, even, even though I was born in the 60s, I was, I was a child. So I still cannot fathom what people... Uh, of the 1950s and the 1930s and of the night you know what they were going through when it came to segregation and prejudice but even so a lot of black folks knew they knew who we were black folks kept a lot they didn't they didn't talk about it a lot because of you know that was something that you didn't talk about black folks were afraid to talk about it but you know even martin luther king knew martin knew who he was he knew who we were you don't believe me look check this out Check this out. The Pilgrim Fathers landed at Plymouth, we were here. Before Jefferson etched across the pages of history and the majestic words of the Declaration of Independence, we were here. Before the beautiful words of the Star Spangled Banner were written, we were here. For more than two centuries, our forebears labored here without wages. They made cotton cane. Before the Pilgrim Fathers landed at Plymouth, we were here. Before Jefferson etched across the pages of history the majestic words of the Declaration of Independence, we were here. You hear what he said? Martin says, before, before the Declaration of Independence was even written, we were here. 
before the spar the words of the spar Star Spangled Banner were even put together, we were here. Now you might be saying, okay, he was talking about slaves. That's what he was talking about. That don't even make any sense. How could that be? How could that be? African slaves did not come here until 1626. Okay, so, oh, okay, well, the, story, the Constitution stuff was put together after that. Boy, man, but listen what he says in the beginning. Let me, let me, let me turn my, my music down right here. Listen what Martin Luther King says from the very beginning. Before the Pilgrim Fathers landed at Plymouth, we were here. Before they landed on Plymouth, before the Pilgrims landed on Plymouth, we were here. Listen to this. Before the Pilgrim Fathers landed at Plymouth, we were here. Before Jefferson etched across the pages of history the majestic words of the Declaration of Independence, we were here. Martin knew. It's us who don't want to embrace the truth. It's us who refuse to embrace the truth. It's us who keep embracing Pan-Africanist and Pan-African ideology and Pan-African philosophy. Listen, I, look, Pan-Africanism is a beautiful thing for Africans. Pan-Africanism is a beautiful thing for Africans. But it's not for us over here in North America because we're not African. To be African, you have to be born in Africa. To be African, you have to know you're African. You have to know your culture, your language, your people. Culture is tied to identity. Those Africans have their African identity because they have their African culture. We were not born in Africa. I was not born in Africa. I don't know anybody in my family born in Africa. There's no one in my family born or from Africa. We're all from here, North America. That's all my family. And we have to embrace truth. It's us who deceive ourselves by allowing the system to lie to us about who we are as a people. And people, it's time to wake up. You know what? Let me play my favorite tune right here by, by Turtle Gang. I'm going to play. You go to a reservation, you see, reservation, you see poverty, poverty, you see churches, churches and you and see you liquor, liquor stores. stores. When, when you, you go, go to any, any hood, hood, you see you poverty, poverty, you see, you see churches, churches, and you see liquor stores. stores. So, so what makes you think you're not on a reservation? Right? So, so all these achievements that we ascribe to African Americans, these are achievements by Native Americans who had to take on the identity of being African American because they was hanging us. But you think they was hanging people because they was Africans. African just want to go home. Nigga from here want to take his shit over. African just want to go home. Nigga from here want to take his shit over. Dropping the raw and uncut just like that. We got to realize who we are, people. We got to stop letting the system tell us who we are. The system that was put together a long time ago by the racist, prejudiced, colonials that set this thing in order. And, 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 and the present day politicians have not gotten rid of it. They've done nothing about it. They've allowed the system to continue to perpetuate lies. Why do you think they won't put true hist slave history in the books? Why do why you think slave history in the, in the school system is so small and so little when it comes to educating our children about true slave history? Because if they tell the truth, they got to tie it to the indigenous people. If they tell the truth, they have to explain the fact that slavery went on for over 200 years before the English came and took over. They have to explain the relationship that the English had with the Spanish with the business deal that they made in 1587 to 1586 to give most of their so-called colonies, a.k.a. plantations, to the English, allowing the English to come in and take over. But they don't want to do that. They want to continue to perpetuate the lie that black people, that our roots are rooted in Africa. My roots is no more rooted in Africa than a than a goddamn Englishman from Britain. My roots is no more rooted in Africa than a white man from Sweden. Ron, actually, you know what? I, I, that's a little bit of exaggeration. Culturally, no. <laughs> but yeah, there's more. There is African blood here on the North, North American plain with us. But that, that, that's not enough African blood to take away the fact that our culture is here. Not enough African blood to take away from the fact that we are rooted here in North America. That's where our ancestors from, our indigenous Amerindian, paleo Amerindian, indigenous black ancestors from here, North America. Raw and uncut, just like that. You feel me? So, on that note, I gotta go. But I'll be back. I definitely will be black. 
Matter of fact, you know what? Before I go, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna, I, I wasn't gonna do this, but I'm gonna do it. I wanna play. I got. I got another track I wanna play before I uh, go. You feel me? And uh, um, it's important to play this track because that's, that's it. You know, I might continue this subject matter um, um, because I, I still have not established some things I wanna establish. I'm gonna establish that right now after this audio cast right here. So check this out. This is the slave population in the United States. Notice in 1800, at almost a million slaves in the United States. Now remember, only 193,000 from the beginning of them bringing them here over 100 years. But remember that from 1800 to 1866, that only 100,000 slaves were brought. But look at the number, 4 million slaves. Where did that number come from? Now, another thing is this, is that we have to realize that two-thirds of those numbers were African males. One-third of the cargo was children and females. If we only did, there were 22% children. If we only did the females, only 14% of those people were females. Who's making all the slaves if there's only 26,000? 26,000 females. Because again, when the females were coming over, they had to acclimate to uh, totally, they're riding on a boat for three months, which is going to knock your system totally out of whack. Okay, and most of the females, when they came over, they were not able to bear children. How are they going to be making all these slaves that were in the United States? Who were these people who were making all of these babies to provide slaves for the United States? And the United States was the only place where we were making our slaves here. That's why the numbers are much smaller. We were growing our own slaves right here, but who were the people that they were using? They were utilizing the indigenous people here. They were utilizing the indigenous people here. How else, How else could, could they, they come, come up, up with these large numbers? How else could they come up with these large numbers? There you go. You heard it. You heard it, sister. You heard it, sister. Silver Wolf dropped the wrong uncut, telling you that they don't look. 80 to 90 percent of the gender on those cargo ships number one there were no slave ships slave ships don't exist that's why you can't find a slave ship in a museum that's when you see you you see the same drawing that's promoted as propaganda what is that drawing where you see a whole bunch of negroes sardined at the bottom of a ship and i want you to know there was there was no ship built like that ever built that's just propaganda there was no ship ever built like that Everybody would die if you stuck Negroes and chained them and tied them to the floor of the bottom of a ship like that and sardine, sardine them in close, shoulder to shoulder, back to back, feet to feet. They would die. They, they would die. They would die from disease. They would die from, defica- from defecating. They would, des- they would die from sickness. They would die from, they would die. You know, c- coming across the so-called Pacific Ocean, that was a two and a half to three month trip two and a half to three month trip and you got everybody sardined tied down can't get up to go use the bathroom can't stretch and move for almost three months no you're not going to survive that trip you're going to die and that's because it never happened so but i will tell you they did bring africans here but they didn't bring africans here the way they told us they brought africans here and they didn't come in the numbers that they claim that's what we need to that's what we need to wake up to people that's what we need to wake up to people we need to wake up to the truth there is a line of truth amongst all the fictitious stories that they tell us there there is a a grain of truth amongst everything meaning yes they did bring africans here but they didn't bring africans in the numbers that they claimed they brought them they didn't come here look you heard the the uh, crash course historian less than five percent then you got go check out and i've told everybody about uh slavevoyages.org put together by four universities go check it out yourself www.slavevoyages.org i got this pinger ping and I'm, but it won't stop anything i'm going again slavevoyages.org okay and you'll see the number the number of africans that came to north america less than a million 305,000 325 i'm gonna quote it again 305,000 300 
and 25 Africans came to North America between 1626 and the last shipment that came in 1887. And again, 80% of them were men. 80 to, 80 to 90 percent of the gender they came were men. So who are you going to breed those to? Indigenous women of America. Okay? Your brother, brother, and Emma slaves were very excited about their past. Yeah, that's real. Brother, see your brother here in uh, chat, uh, dropping a cut, sharing it wrong. Knock this person pinging my show like crazy. It's too late. My show is, I'm finna get off the air. You started earlier. It's too late. This person in my show. Ain't the wrong. I'm still upload the information when I'm done. Uh, you know, my, my show. So I'm finna get off the air. So I will be back. I will be black. Next delicious black Sunday. Dropping nothing wrong. Anybody have any, you hearing any interference? That's the person who be pinging my show. You decide to try to pee at the my show. But worry, I'm finna upload this show on my past web. You can check it out. I will be back. You be black. Dropping up the wrong here on the village. Community I catch. Always join me. You can always chime in. This call time just for your conscious time. You can chime in at 854-459-340. You can also chime in at 857-232-0155. And don't forget the conference key, which is 947595. Again, you can chime in and join me every Sunday here at the Black Village Community Podcast call, doesn't cost you a dime just a bit of your conscious time you can join me here at the conference table of truth in a conscious discussion on our indigenous ancestors of North America every Sunday at 855-445-9340 and 857-232-0155 in conference key 94. 94- 7595. I gotta go, but I'll be, and I definitely will be black, drop nothing but the raw and cut. And as always, I love chicken. You feel me? So love, peace, and chicken grease. I gotta go. Check your guys out next delicious back Sunday. And peace, love to all my indigenous conscious people. We gotta come together, you guys. So join me. Anybody can also join me also on Google Communities. The Black Village. I'm on Google Communities. I'm on Black Village. I'm on Facebook. And I'm on YouTube. And I'm on iTunes. You can always find my podcast there as well. Peace and love. I gotta go. Thank you.